Uh, thank you very much. And uh, for the next little bit, we will talk about citrus and one of the huge impacts that's going on within the citrus industry today. The citrus industry in Florida is a key agricultural commodity. It's at a tipping point within the area. We're losing both political and economic influence, as well as uh, influence with the chemical companies that make the chemicals and the products that we use because of our, our, our declining supply of oranges. So the challenges that we faced over the many past years are such things as land prices. As they increase, it's more difficult to farm, as well as demand for irrigation water, diseases. We all are familiar with the citrus canker episodes from a few years ago. Environmental issues like hurricanes, drought, and the much needed rain we've had the last couple of days. Labor shortages, and due to all this, our production costs have more than doubled since the year 2000. With each of these new challenges, the industry has always come forth with solutions to grow, thrive, and to prosper. However, all of that changed recently. In 2005, as citrus canker, or some people refer to it as Hong Long Bing or HLB, came into Florida. Uh, all varieties are affected by citrus greening, and it is considered one of the worst diseases worldwide for citrus. Greening was first found in Florida in 2005 and rapidly spread throughout the entire state. Nearly all mature trees now within central Florida are infected with the disease. Uh, it was found in 2004 in the, the state of Sao Paulo, Brazil, uh, and they are the world's largest citrus juice producer uh, currently. Uh, currently, they have 17% of their trees are infected as well, and that totals about 32 million trees in Brazil. HLB, or citrus greening, is also found in Texas, California, and Mexico, as well as in China and some other countries worldwide. The disease is caused by a bacterium. Uh, that bacterium is transmitted from tree to tree by a small insect called the Asian citrus psyllid. It's much smaller than a grain of rice, but large enough to bring the citrus industry to its knees. The psyllid acquires the bacteria as it feeds on an infected plant. The bacteria then replicates inside of the insect, and then it's able to transmit that disease to another tree. There is no known cure for HLB or citrus greening at this point in time. If you think of the analogy of a mosquito feeding on an infected person with malaria and then feeding on someone that's not infected, it's the same transmission process feeding on the infected, and then feeding on the non-infected. The disease causes tree decline. The, it, those trees lose both their shoots and their roots. Uh, therefore, they're producing less fruit per tree. This ultimately reduces the economics of the citrus industry, thereby reducing the revenues to the grower and also the revenues to the local communities that those farmers employ or either buy the services locally or elsewhere. Since 2002, the citrus industry has decreased from 850,000 acres in that time period, currently to 400,000. That's a 48% decline in acreage in that 15-year time period. Since 2002 to 2016 season, the orange production has dropped by 66%. The grapefruit production is down now by 80%. And in this year, you actually go further down because of the effects of not only greening, but also the effects of, of Irma. We are now down 82% from that 2002 time period. Well, growers are currently doing all the practices that they can to remain economically viable. They're minimizing any kind of stress that the tree is experiencing be that moisture, stress, or water, we're applying the same amount of water, but in smaller doses more frequently. Same amount of nutrients, but in much smaller doses, trying to allow the tree to survive the disease as best as possible. The long-term solution, we must ultimately develop a tree that is resistant to the disease, or either find the tree that's resistant to the disease. We need to use every innovative technology whether that's a GMO tree, and I know lots of people don't like the concept of GMO, but I may like to eat fruit from a GMO tree versus no fruit at all, or either one that's been sprayed less. So there's always a trade-off between those things. But whatever kind of tree we come up with, genetically modified, or some other naturally 
resistant tree that is found, it must produce high quality fruit and lots of it for the grower to be profitable. The industry and its partners since in the last 10 years has spent over $700 million researching every avenue possible. They've studied the bacteria, they've studied the psyllid, they've studied the interaction between the psyllid and the bacteria and how that ultimately impacts the tree. They're also using the latest technology, which is called CRISPR, and which is a genetic uh, tool that you can block a certain gene or regulate it up or regulate it down, again, trying to come up with a disease, a tree that will be resistant to the disease. The National Academy of Science recently reported in a 185-page report, and I won't refer to all of it, but in that they said they would find no single solution that is likely going to be to be the solution. Without a solution, the continued downward trend, as you can notice in the chart, is going to continue. Uh, the new, a new tree, if one is found, when it's found, will take a period of time to bring it into production. There's certainly a lag between any kind of innovation, the adoption of that innovation, and when that innovation will yield fruit. And that's going to be probably at least five or six years at the time period. Growers must be willing to try every new strategy possible. They need to think outside of the typical production box and then find solutions. You may say, well, it really doesn't matter to me. But, however, the economics of this is huge. In 2002, we had over 100 fresh fruit packing houses. Today, we have less than 20. And of those 20, three probably could pick, pack every orange in the state of Florida. Well, you may say, I don't eat fresh fruit, but I drink juice. We had 42 processing plants in 2002. Today, we have less than 14. And all of those are working at less than optimum efficiency. The economic impact to the state is over a billion dollars per year, and 20,000 jobs have been lost due to the, the disease. Citrus growers and researchers must find strategies to combat the disease and a long-term solution to allow profitability if you wish to have your orange juice every morning. You, now you and the growers must determine if this sun is rising with new solutions or just a setting sun on the Florida citrus industry. Thank you very much.